Hey, uh, it's Furious Black once again. Um, I just want to, you know, go over a couple things that I was thinking about. And uh, one of them is uh, God, God the Father, Son, the, uh, Christ, and uh, the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like, it's kind of like uh, the Father, your Father, uh, calling one of his friends and telling him, you know, hey, my son's going to come and pick up something from you and help you, you know, load it in the truck and stuff like that. You never met the son before, you know, and you're waiting on him, and that person is waiting on uh, your son's arrival. You get what I'm saying? I'm putting you in the shoes of being the father or you in the shoes of being the the person that is listening to the father of the child that's coming to pick up something that you have. You know, you never met the son before and you are waiting on his arrival at a certain period of time uh, between, you know, whatever time it is. So the son comes and it's around the time where you were told that he was going to come, you know. Uh, are you going to believe that that's the son of the father that was told to come? Or you're going to believe that's somebody else? Or are you going to believe that it's too good to be true? Do you get what I'm saying? That's what the whole Bible is about. The father been saying that the son was coming from the beginning. Moses told you. David told you. Uh, Isaiah also told you. You know, um, even Ezra in the Apocrypha tells you what about him. So that's the, that's the type of scenario you have to look at it as. So now the son is going to come and he's telling you, yeah, my father sent me. And he's telling you who his father is. And you're, that's how you believe him because the stories that you guys share. You understand? That's what the that's what it's about. You get what I'm saying? So when Christian Christians come and tell you, you know, the Old Testament is done away with and you don't have to listen to it or you don't have to pay attention to it. That's how you don't understand what Christ is talking about when he's talking about his neighbor and who his neighbor is that he's uh, that is pertaining to. So when he's saying that you are to um, love thy neighbor, he's not talking about the nations because in the Old Testament, it tells you who the neighbor is. The neighbor is the children of Israel that you are supposed to be dwelling with. You see what I'm saying? So you have to understand that in order to understand what Christ is talking about. The First Testament, Old Testament, is telling you what's going to happen in the world, prophecies, and stuff like that. Then in the New Testament, Christ is verifying what he's here to do that is based off of the Old Testament. That's what it's about. It's not about... Uh, is he the Messiah or, well, I mean, it is about him being the Messiah because he's the Savior, he's the Christ, he's the anointed, the one that has come to save those which that were lost from the laws that they was following. You get what I'm saying? They're lost from who they was following. Now we're following uh, the Talmuds and, and Ceramuses and, and Nimrod's laws and, his, and those gods. That's who we're following. So we're the ones that are lost. So back to the topic, it's just like that. You know the father, you've been dealing with him, and now he's telling you, listen, hey, I'm going to send my son. He's going to help you do this, this, and that. You know, that's what that's, what that's about. Now the Holy Spirit is like, uh, you know, you know, if for lack of better words, you know, the mother, you know, she's verifying the two of them. You know, later on that night, Either your wife or something is talking to the father's wife and she's talking about the two of them. You see what I'm saying? So it, it all goes together. It correlates together to show you that what is being talked about is true because they're all talking about it over centuries. You get what I'm saying? Over generations, all these people are talking about the same exact stuff. That's how you know that the scriptures is true. Right. No other book does that. No other book has prophecies in it. The only reason that Egypt, Egyptology people, uh, Egyptians or whatever you would like to call them, say that the Bible is uh, plagiarized. 
they're talking about the laws. They're not talking about the prophecies and stuff like that. But when you read Paul in Romans chapter 3, he tells you, I mean, who wants, you know, uh, who doesn't want to live in a lawless type of place? So, of course, nations before Israel became established have laws. Because you don't want nobody stealing. You know what I'm saying? These are things that are morally, you know, just. You, everybody has morals. Everybody is born with morals within them. So that's why all these other uh, uh, nations have laws because that that's how you govern a society. You understand what I'm saying? So to say that the Bible is false, it shows the lack of education and the lack of research that you've done on the scriptures. And if you did do... Uh, Research you did research on Christianity that is out there now, not on uh, the true followers of Christ, which is the Hebrew Israelites. And when you do battle or do come to debate a Hebrew Israelite, that's what you battle them off of uh, Christianity as what the world is teaching it, not what um, not what Israel is teaching. That's you definitely don't bat, uh, debate us on that. Because we confound you on everything that uh, the world brings on to Israel through the scriptures. You see what I'm saying? Because you say, oh, God loves the world. We say, no, he doesn't. All right. Now, on to the next thing. The ark. The ark of Noah. Uh, you know, this is another thing that, you know, if you use your intelligence and you look at your surroundings, uh, you can definitely see how the ark is possible. Okay, all right. Let's take the world that we live in for uh, example. You have a Boeing 747 holds over 200 people in the plane, right? Flies over countries in a matter of hours, which would take you years to get from one point of the world to another in a matter of hours. Now, if you was to tell somebody in the 1400s and probably before that, there would be a plane that you know, took you from one point of the world to another, people would look at you crazy, right? Now you have boats, crazy-sized boats that have thousands of people on them that's partying, has a basketball court. These are things, you know, years ago, people were like, you're crazy, there would be nothing like that. Generations ago, thousands of years ago, they would be like, there's nothing like that. Planes. Now, take another thing for uh, example, a television. Did they have televisions? TVs? No. These are things that you guys take for granted and don't think and think that an uh, ark which had every animal in it for granted. Now, he didn't take no dinosaurs in there. You understand what I'm saying? That's an, a topic for another uh, uh for somebody else, because, you know, I don't really want to get into that. But you have TVs that show people on it that project other people and sound. Now, you're driving a, a vehicle, they have trains, they have buses. These are things that they didn't have years ago. Now, if somebody was to tell you that they was going to have these things, you wouldn't believe it if you lived in a certain time period. So now... We're in 2014, and we think that the ark is impossible when they're going into space. I mean, let's really think about these things. Let's really think about them. They're going into space with space shuttles. We believe, uh, majority of the people that's watching this video right now believe in aliens, right? So, how is it far-fetched that God could uh, flood the world when you have a TV that projects a face and sound give you a TV show these are little things you have a cell phone that I'm using right now to show you a video of a, of a topic that I believe would be uh, good for us and you still believe that it's impossible to have to build ark out of wood a huge ark when they have buildings that are hundred stories I mean like come on come on 
Come on. These are these are not hard things. They're not hard things. They definitely are not hard things to understand. How can you not understand it? How can you not see it? When in every day you walk around in an impossible world that was, you know, in unthinkable hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago.